Now, House Republicans have uh, introduced a bill that would severely curtail the rights of people who are uh, disabled. Now, already the Trump budget has been taking on disability rights uh, by threatening to cut disability uh, insurance through Social Security. And now Congress is now uh, expected to vote on a bill that would weaken the American with Disabilities Act. Now, uh, this was introduced by Representative Ted Poe of Texas. Now, it's called the ADA Education and Reform Act, but it doesn't have anything to do about education, uh, but plenty to do about reform. Now, what it would do is that it would address the 1990 civil rights law that protects people with disabilities. Now, they're protected under this law from things like employment, access to public entities, such as transportation, and accommodations to enjoy businesses. Now, for example, that accommodation might be being able to go to a hotel that doesn't have physical barriers to getting inside. So things like ramps and all that. Now, the law also provides people uh, or allows people with disabilities to file lawsuits against businesses that do not provide reasonable accommodations. Now, again, you might be asking, what's reasonable? It's basically having things like, again, the, the hotel example, having a wheelchair ramp or having doors that open automatically or, or for people who push the button, right? Push a button the door opens, um, and that allows people who cannot walk, who ride in these wheelchairs, to be able to get through the door. That seems incredibly reasonable. Now, also, same thing for if you're working in an office, right? Building a ramp so they can get in and out of the building, reasonable, right? Now, unfortunately, of course, uh, these lawmakers... Uh, people like Ted Poe and, and people that support, support this bill, they think the law protects people who with disabilities too much. And their main problem is what they call drive-by lawsuits. Well, that's fascinating. I've never heard of a drive-by lawsuit. Well, it turns out the claim is, is that the drive-by lawsuits are where people who are disabled drive by a business. They never attempt to patronize it. And then See, that there's a violation of the ADA. Ooh, oh, look at that. I just was driving by this McDonald's, and I realized that they don't have a handicap ramp. I'm going to sue them, even though I never wanted to go to McDonald's. Okay, well, they also add that uh, while they never meant to patronize that uh, establishment, but, uh, they still decide that they wanted to file a lawsuit that they say are nearly identical to dozens, if not of hundreds, others filed. Well, maybe they didn't patronize it because it's not accessible. Again, if you're seeing ADA violations just right driving by, and you think, why am I going to go there if I can't access it in the first place? That's the most obvious thing in the world. Uh, but again, that's an argument that the people who support this legislation are saying. Like, oh, they just drive by. They didn't even want to go there in the first place. Well, maybe they couldn't. <laughs> okay. Uh, and look, on that second part, how are people supposed to know that the same lawsuit has been filed hundreds, if, uh, uh, you know, uh, tens, if not hundreds of times? And you would think that if a lawsuit is, by the way, has been filed tens, not, if not hundreds of times, for them to make it more accessible for people with disabilities... You, don't you think they would have made it accessible by now? So, wow, there's some big, gigantic holes in this argument that they use against this. But the whole purpose here, the whole idea of bringing up drive-by lawsuits is to paint disabled people as grifters that are just there to hurt legitimate businesses with their frivolous complaints, right? And also they can make an extra buck. Well, okay, well, that brings me to what the bill says. Now, the bill would require people making complaints to let a business know of any accessibility violations in writing. So you got to write it down, right? The business would then have 60 days to acknowledge the complaint and respond, and 120 days after the 60 days to make substantial progress towards making those changes. Now, Jeff, 
you might ask, why are you against that? That sounds incredibly reasonable. I mean, all they have to do is, look, you give them a time frame, right? So you're giving them time to work on this, and they just have to promise that they're actually working on it. Well, that's where the problem lies. The ACL argues that these provisions, if adopted in the law, would actually remove any incentives for businesses to comply with the ADA. Because business owners can theoretically be out of compliance for years and not be penalized for it. All they have to do is say, oh, we have received your complaint. We acknowledge your complaint. And don't worry, we're working on making substantial progress. <laughs> now, wait a minute. You might be wondering, now, what company would want to do that, right? Why would they want to lose business for these people? Well, here's the thing. Being ADA compliant costs a little bit of money. It costs money to build a ramp. So a lot of these companies are like, piss on it. It's not worth it if I get, what, maybe one disabled customer every few times, uh, 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 like every few weeks or every few days or something like that. And there's not enough people to justify the cost of the business. Now, look, monetarily, I guess that makes sense. Um, and it's funny, it goes along with the allegations made for the drive-by lawsuits, right? Where, oh, well, why am I going to be compliant when they just drive by? Again, they're driving by because maybe, maybe because you're not compliant and you don't have accessibility. Again, weird argument, easily defeated, but whatever, right? But again, it, it, make, it costs money, okay, to be handicap compliant and accessible. And look, to be fair, some have tried and have ended up doing it incredibly poorly. Now, one example, I'm, I'm going to show you this uh, image here. This is a 7-Eleven, right? So, okay, 7-Eleven. It might be a little bit hard to see, but look, two handicapped spots, and you have a access aisle. Well, that should be enough, you think. That's, that looks compliant. See, they've got access. Except that when you look really closely, there's something missing for that access aisle. Uh, any guesses on what it is? It would be a ramp. It would be one of those. See, that, that's a ramp. So, no ramp means that somebody who parks in those handicapped spots could uh, or would have to go around. They can't get up that ramp if they're in a wheelchair. So, they would have to go back through traffic um, onto that sidewalk which is, of course, potentially dangerous for a person traveling in the wheelchair and also potentially annoying and dangerous for people who are pulling into that parking lot. So that's not at all good access. That would be a violation of the ADA. So if somebody would complain about that, under current law, they could sue, and then the company would have to go and make sure that they were compliant. But under this law... They, would com they could complain, and then that's it. All they would have to do is come back and say, well, we're trying to make progress here. And the reason that they can do that is because right now there is no enforcement. There's, there's, no, there's no people that come out and inspect. There's no ADA inspectors, okay? There are no compliance officers that will come and hit you with a, with a fine. There's none of that written into the ADA. So there's actually very little incentive other than the lawsuits, which are available under the ADA, under current law, to be able to incentivize them to comply with the law. In fact, the ACLU also says that the bill flies in the face of the intention of civil rights laws. The Civil Rights Act of 1964's provision allowing those who were denied access to public accommodation due to race, color, religion, or national origin, to immediately seek relief aims to push businesses to take these accommodations seriously. So this is part of that now. So, and this is what they often reference. And again, the ADA and the Civil Rights Act are different, but really disabled people should be uh, involved in that as well. So 
you might say, look, Jeff, that's all well and good, right? And I see where you're coming from, and I see where you want access, you know, want to increase access for regular people. And I know we don't have that well of enforcement, but I, I keep hearing these stories about people that are doing these lawsuits and that are gaming the system in order to make money. What about the people that are making money from this? Well, it turns out that's not actually true either. As Robin Powell explains in Rewire, when the ADA was being drafted as a compromise between the business community and the disability community, the disability community gave up the option to obtain damages for a business failure to comply with the law by only allowing injunctive relief. Meaning that the business owner only has to change their behavior and also has to only pay for attorney's fees. So people are not getting monetary damages for, from these lawsuits. People ain't getting rich off this. Now, to be fair, there are some state and local laws that do allow some compensatory damages to be assessed against the business owner. Now, you can be against that, you can be for that. And I guess there is a potential for abuse on that. Potential, right? But the ADA itself, what they're trying to change, does not permit monetary damages to be assessed against big business owners in lawsuits brought by people with disabilities. That is the compromise they struck with the business community. So all you can do with the ADA lawsuit is ask them, hey, or not ask them, but demand that, hey, man, look, we just want you to make this more accessible for us. We're not going to get anything out of it except for the ability to access your facilities, as is our right under the ADA. It is the only incentive to spur these companies into making it more accessible. As I said, ain't nobody getting rich on this, okay? You can't just drive by a business, find out that they don't have access, and decide, I'm going to use this to cash in. That's not how it works, okay? Now, unfortunately, the way that this bill is drafted and being presented... It makes it seem like the business owners are the real victims of this. But think about it this way. This was signed into law in 1990. They've had how many years to make their businesses more accessible? And look, to be honest, a lot of them have. I've seen a lot of places with handicap ramps uh, for people in wheelchairs, handicap spots, good ra you know, railing, things like that. Uh, and other accommodations. And that's wonderful. And so those are the people that don't have issues with this so-called drive-by uh, lawsuits. Because they've actually done what they're supposed to do under the Americans with Disability Act. But some have not. And unfortunately, what this bill being out there portrays, and, and, and the portrayal by Republicans who are pushing this, like Ted Poe, is that, no, no, these disabled people, they just want to cash in. They just want to get the money, and we've got to protect the business community. We've got to protect uh, corporations. But here's the thing. The people who are falling into that argument, you got to remember that, guys, you don't know what it's like to be disabled. I don't know what it's like to be disabled. Nobody knows unless they have lived that disability. And so in researching for this story, I didn't realize that that 7-Eleven picture, like, was inaccessible, was a violation, was inaccessible to people in the wheelchair. And then when, it, when you look at it, when you think about it, it's like, oh, oh, now I see the problem. Okay, well, now I understand why people are complaining. Now I understand why there are complaints. Now I understand what these, where, where the issue actually lies. It's about trying to understand where people are coming from. And we could definitely use more understanding and not more, you know, just just ideas that and, and thoughts that, no, these people, are, they're just trying to run a scam. Because when you look into the details, you realize that it's not a scam and that it's all about just trying to create equal access. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYT Nation.